How's it everybody? Celtic Link here, and it's that time again. The info for the next Dokkan Fest on Global has dropped, and you've probably got yourself wondering whether or not you should be summoning for the Dokkan Fest AGL Captain Ginyu. In this video, I'm going to give you my recommendation on whether or not you should summon for this unit or continue to save your hard-earned stones for the 7-year anniversary in about a month from now. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Dokkan content. So, last night we got some pretty huge info drop between both JP and Global Dokkan, uh, but on the global side of things, we know that we are getting this Dokkan Fest AGL Captain Ginyu uh, banner starting more than likely within the next 24 to 36 hours um, if we look over here at the current global campaign which is the golden week campaign the soaring fighting spirit campaign we we know that the elder kai banner is ending uh tomorrow evening at around 20 22 30 pst so we know that dokkan doesn't typically like to drop banners too far out after ending an Elder Kai banner, so I would say sometime within a couple hours to 18 hours or so after the ending of this Elder Kai banner tomorrow, we should likely see the Dokkan Fest Ginyu banner. We want to go ahead and take a look at the banner here. This is sort of what we can expect to see, I think, uh, for Global. I don't expect too many changes. We'll have the Dokkan Fest Ginyu, the Jason Birder, the Raccoon and Goldo um, as the main headlining units, new units. Um, and then as far as returning units go, on JP, they had Tech Kalen Khalifla, STR Kefla, STR Blue Kaioken Goku, and STR Namek Goku. Um, I do expect to see a major change, which we'll go over in a minute to this banner. But before we talk about that change, uh, let's kind of talk about the units themselves, because I think understanding what these units do is important for your decision on whether or not you should summon. So let's take a look here at the Ginyu. So while in his Captain Ginyu form, he is a Terrifying Conquerors or Planet Namek Saga lead for 170%, and he gives an additional 30% to Space Traveling Warriors. So this is pretty much most Frieza's, Coolers, Bojacks, Turlises, uh, Raditz, um, Nappas and Saiyan Saga Vegeta's, right? Um, so it's a pretty good leader skill, um, but as a leader himself, Ginyu doesn't really work as the leader because he's not going to link up with a lot of those characters uh, because of his link set. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, let's, his super attack, he raises defense and causes immense damage. He's an infinite defense stacker. His passive is attack and defense 180% and an additional attack 50% when performing a super attack, he launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack and has an additional attack and defense per Ginyu Force category ally on the team, up to 50%. He also gives Ginyu Force category allies attack and defense 30% and is effective against all types when there is another Ginyu Force ally on the team. He can transform into Goku using his body change ability when your HP is 70% or less starting from the fourth turn of battle. Once transformed into Goku Ginyu, he now raises attack infinitely instead of defense. He also has a nice little recovery of 59%. That's, that's a pretty significant chunk of your health you're getting back when you exchange. Um, he is now attack and defense 200% plus an additional attack 50% when performing a super attack. He launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack and an additional attack and defense 10% up to 50% uh, chance of performing a critical hit and evading enemies attack plus 10% with each attack performed and a high chance of foreseeing enemy super attack when there is an ally who includes Jace on the team. So as you can see by reading the two passives of both the Goku Ginyu and the standard Ginyu here is in order to make the full use of him, he needs to be on a Ginyu Force team, right? You need the Ginyu Force allies to be effective against all type. You need for his extra attack and defense buff, you need Ginyu Force allies in base form. And then to foresee super attacks in his uh, Goku Ginyu form, you need specifically Jace on the team. Um, 
So this poses a problem, right? Because you basically either need the two banner units. Uh, we won't go in their full details here because we did do that in the video yesterday. Um, so we're going to focus mostly on the headliner unit here. But you basically need these two units here. And they are good. Um, but the question is, are they worth your stones this close to the seven year anniversary um they are powerhouses when run under the ginyu ginyu is a powerhouse when run with those two um you could get away with running free-to-play units but you're six you're significantly crippling your team just to make ginyu himself stronger um which can be a problem right um so given that right we oop, wrong banner um where is it here it is Given that, we look at their banner, we know that in order to get the full use of them, you need to summon for both the Ginyu, the Jason Birder, and the Raccoon and Goldo to make the full use of him. Uh, that kind of... Just knowing that alone, I'm going to say no. So this is the first stipulation. No, but... Okay, so it's a no, knowing that you need all three in order to make Ginyu at his max potential, right? So that part makes it a no. But here's the thing that may sort of change yours or my answer. Uh, this Tech, Kale, and Khalifla, like, when we look at the banner, we know that these guys were just on the AGL Cell banner uh, on the current campaign on Global. So it's pretty likely that they're going to swap Tech Kale and Khalifa out for another unit. The question is, who are they going to swap them out for? My bet is that they are going to swap them out for the Tech Androids. The Tech Androids are next on the slate to return to Global Dokkan. They're uh, the only unit that hasn't returned yet, next to this guy here, the AGL Trunk. So I imagine one of these two are going to be slated in that Tech Kale and Khalifa spot. Um, they could keep them but I, I think it's unlikely because they are going to want you to spend stones and I think the best way to do that is by bringing back this unit because I would assume Akatsuki knows that people like this unit and that this is a very good unit and it would entice people to summon so I imagine seeing them here so knowing that that we could see the tech androids here instead of the Kale and Khalifla my answer to now should you summon is still no <laughs> they are good if you haven't picked them up i would say go ahead and coin them but um the rest of the banner is i mean for lack of a better word complete duty right str kefla is not that good blue kaioken koku not that good um namaku is he, he's all right he's he's an all right defensive stacker but he's you have better options for running him on namak saga or uh Super Saiyans, especially if you pulled the Int uh, Super Saiyan Goku from last year. Um, so as far as two, two considerations for summoning, right? First is that you do need all three. So my consideration there is no, you probably shouldn't summon knowing you needed that. All right. Second consideration is will they put on the tech androids? All right. They are most likely to replace Kaelin Caulifla. My recommendation is still no. It's it's still not worth it knowing the rest of the banner. Okay, and then final, third thing for your consideration on whether or not you should summon on this banner. Um, where is it? Right here. So last year, the Dokkan Fest banner that was in this spot was this uh, Fizz, Trunks, and Goten. And this banner, being the banner right before the anniversary to entice people to summon, they did a step up with one guaranteed featured S SSR at the end of the step up. So the first one was five characters for, I believe, 25 stones. Then the second with one guaranteed SSR. The second one was seven characters for 30 stones, one guaranteed SSR. And then step three, 10 characters, so normal summon for 45 stones, one guaranteed SSR. So 100 stones, and you are getting a guaranteed featured SSR. They are more than likely going to bring this back for this Dokkan Ginyu banner. Um, there's just, there's no way they don't do it, <laughs> honestly. It's, it's, it's been tradition for most of the banners right before a big celebration, so I, I imagine you're going to see it now. 
knowing that there's likely to be discounts with a guaranteed featured SSR, should you summon. My answer is it depends. <laughs> and it's going to depend on your stone count. If you can afford 100 stones, go for it, right? If you're sitting around 8, 900, maybe even over 1,000, go for it. Throw 100 stones at it. You, if you get lucky, pick up the Ginyu. Hey, you've got the Ginyu. Pick up the tech androids. Hey, you got the tech androids. Um, you pick up the banner units. Even better, you can just hold them to the side until you finally do pick up Ginyu, either through summons or through coins, right? Because, like I said, you do need them in order to run Ginyu effectively. Um, but otherwise, I would honestly say, if you're anything below 800 stones, like, don't even touch this banner. I know the guaranteed features are empty, right? But Right, consider your guaranteed feature featured could be STR Kefla or Blue Kaioken Goku, right? So just keep that in the back of your head. So, I mean, all in all here, my recommendation on should you summon is a big, fat no, right? Even with the step-ups, um, we're too close to the 7 year anniversary, guys. And as good as Ginyu is, I mean, honestly, he's in the running for top 1 TUR in Dokkan right now. But that's only if you've got them with dupes and if you got the two banner units. So knowing that, it's just, it's honestly not worth it, guys. Save your stones for literally the best units in Dokkan. Um, let's go ahead and pull them up here. Um, okay, uh, where is it? The campaigns, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the campaigns just so you can see this here. Because I, I want you to see this. The Veneer Anniversary. Here it is. Part 1. Let's just go ahead and scroll down to the two banners here. Where are they hiding? Here they are. Oop. Where did it go? All right. Right, these are the two greatest banners in Dokkan history, and any <laughs> any stones you spend on this Ginyu banner is less stones you can spend on this LR God banner. Look, I mean, majority of the characters here are LRs and good LRs, right? You got MUI Goku on the God banner, you got full power Frieza on the God banner, Bu Buhan's still good. The gods themselves are insane, right? And then we look at the Super Saiyan 4 banner, right? Sin Shenron, the banner unit is good. The, <laughs> the the Super Saiyan 4s are insane, like the best LR in the game. Ant Namek Goku, uh, Ant Vegeta, STR Vegito, and then these guys getting their easy A's here. Uh, the, the Ant Vegito and Gogeta plus the GT duo, like, you shouldn't be summoning on any other banner guys, like, these are the banners that are worth your stone. So, um, again, just to recap, should you summon on this banner, knowing that you need all units uh, to make Ginyu effective? No. Knowing that they might replace these guys with tech androids? No. Knowing that um, there's guaranteed features, unless you can afford it, right? 100 stones, unless you can afford it? No. That's my recommendation, guys. I... I hope you like the recommendation. If you agree with me, uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you disagree with me, really let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your reasoning for justifying uh, spending stones this close to the anniversary. I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, again, that's the video. That's my recommendation. So uh, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you like these kinds of should you summon videos please consider subscribing to the channel and if nothing else guys thanks for watching and aloha